welcome to Downloadable. I am your host, Neil Taylor, and this time on the show, we are taking a look at Nimblebit's Nimble Quest for the PC. Now, Nimblebit has been around for a while. They are a publisher of iOS and Android mobile games. Uh, you might be familiar with some of them, Tiny Towers and Pocket Planes, even Pocket Frogs as well. This is a port of Nimble Quest for the PC. Uh, I just want to show you the options menu first. Yeah, there's not actually a lot. Music on or off, sounds on or off, and a tutorial. That's about it. No full screen mode. Bit of a shame, but okay, I'll let it go because basically once we get into the game, you won't care, or I don't. Uh, if you're seeing shop and you're going, oh no, mobile app, oh, microtransactions, uh, no, in-game. All in-game stuff. I've actually been working on some things like the fully upgraded attack mode there. You buy these with the... Uh, the uh, in-game currency, the, the sort of the crystals that you get. You also get tokens. Now, I'll explain tokens when we get actually into the game, which won't be long. Also, an arena mode as well. But let's actually talk about playing the game first. Now, here you can see a long list of heroes, and these are all the ones I've actually managed to unlock. Uh, these, on the other hand, are the ones I haven't managed to do so. Yeah, it's uh, taking a while to get there. Plenty of different heroes, different styles of attack. You've got Arcane here, who's a ranged attack. You've got uh, Uther here, who's got a lance. Gizmo, who throws bombs, for he is awesome and he is my leader. As you can tell, played a fair few bit there. You know, 274 kills. I've managed to upgrade him, so he's actually got um, more attack power. Because if you hit the icon there, you can see what your star rating is. So, one star, it gives me a 25% blast radius, 50% attack range on two, and three, he explodes on death. Fun. You can do this uh, one of two ways, so let's uh, click on here. If you have the points, oh, well, we check do. Two stars for a thousand gems. Ten thousand gems, even. I don't think I have enough of that. So, there you go. You can do it that way. Or, if he is the party leader, you do have experience points, so you can actually uh, gain experience by killing killing monsters and gaining experience points, so you can level up that way. Does seem to take a really, really long time, because I play a lot with Gizmo, and that's all I've got. I think it might reset, obviously, when you, you go up a star, so if I when I bought my second star, all his XP dropped down, and obviously it's for the third star. It's going to take a while. Alright, up there you can see my, my gems and my tokens. Now let's actually jump into the game. We're going to use uh, Gizmo because he's fun and he has bombs. Blowing shit up is good. Now here, before you enter the level, you have a couple of options. Now you can just drive straight in and play. You can add in a hero for a token. As you can see, I've got 26 tokens. Or you can go on with a, a buff to start you off so you can move a little bit quicker. You've got extra health. Sorry, that's moved a bit quicker. You've got shield, attack bonus. What's that one? Skip to the next stage and it, oh, <laughs> I can actually skip a level. It's kind of handy, I, I might use that just to unlock some more characters. Let's jump into the game and talk about the gameplay because it is going to be exceedingly familiar to a lot of you. So, do you remember Snake? Yes, Snake on your mobile phone? That is what this game is, it is a twist on it. You basically, you, you have control of which direction your heroes are going to head in, up, down, left, right. And that's it. Contact with anything will kill you. So if you walk into the wall, you will die. Walk into an enemy, you will die. And it's th that simple. It and it makes the game a lot of fun. Strangely enough, I uh, I bought this and I haven't stopped playing it because it's just a lot of fun. I love the look of the game. This whole 16-bit aesthetic that it's got going on just is really perfect for it. And the fact that if you've played Snake at all, if you're of a certain age. Is that a nice way of putting it? A certain age? <laughs> I'm definitely of a certain age now. Um, you'll probably have fond memories of playing Snake. It was a game that we played on the phone a lot. Well, this is that exact concept, if you're familiar with it all. You just head in a direction at a certain speed. You have to try avoiding the walls. And unlike Snake, where it was just picking up blocks, here you're attacking enemies, picking up gems, picking up extra heroes, and progressing through the level system. And it does this concept really well. I mean, if you think about it, we know that the snake concept as a game, gameplay-wise, worked because we've all played hours and hours of it. And this takes that concept and adds to it and makes... It gives you a new game to play, you know. There's a lot of different things that you have to learn. Like, you have characters with range attack, melee attacks, close range, long range. 
And then you factor in the enemies. All right, we're still in the early stages here, so a lot of the enemies are very easy. But as you can see, they start to travel around in groups. They start to have extra attacks, so you have, again, long range, close range. Later on, you'll get healers, so you have to learn to focus them down quicker. It's also very much into the risk reward system of how close do you want to get to the enemies to attack them because you know you get too close and they turn in the same direction as you do and you walk into them your lead character hits it it's all over if an enemy hits any of your characters in your party it you will that character will die so i really really find this game addictive as you may have noticed like i said i bought this game i haven't stopped playing it it takes those principles of snake and just make something new out of it and a real really fun game comes from it the fact that they also add in these um, bonuses that you can pick up there like magnets so you know ooh, that was close um <laughs> so any gems that are dropped will automatically come to you you've got i've got the attack bonus up there so i can attack quicker which this level doesn't really need it later levels you kind of want that more heroes if you look in the top left of the screen you can see that seven of eight i have I can have up to eight heroes in this sort of train, and I'm up to seven, so the more heroes, the more powerful. Ah, tokens. Now, tokens will drop every so often, so you can replenish them. Or, if you have a thousand gems, you can buy a, one token in the shop. Now, another interesting factor is, uh, if you die, you can use a token to restart, and it will cost you one, then it will cost you two, then four, then eight. So I like that, that there's sort of, you've got a balance there that you can continue the level. Oh, should I say restart the level? Without having to restart the entire game. But it will cost you a lot of tokens and the further you go, the more it costs. That was lucky. Also, the music is wonderful. I just really love this wonderful music. It is a lovely throwback to 16-bit games. And Oh, it's enjoyable as all hell. And like I said, gameplay-wise, simplistic, but hard to master. So you're going, oh yeah, it's easy. You're walking in line, you get close to the enemies and attack. Well, it's not that easy. Because you have to sometimes do that and cut it way too close. Oh, I hate the archers. Uh, we're still in the early stages of the game, so it, get, it is still simple. You can end up with a lot of groups on screen, and there you can see a healer in the group. Alright, killed her that time, nice and simple, but you've got to learn to focus those down. Because they will heal anything nearby you, so you've got to try and get those out quick, so you can focus down the rest of the enemies on the screen. I'm loving this game. <laughs> Another good thing I want to mention about this... It is a port of a mobile game, but they're not asking a lot of money for it. Right now, you can pick this game up on Steam for three ninety nine, four quid. That is not actually a bad price considering some ports of mobile games. They want a ridiculous amount of money for. You know, they want you know ten pounds for, and they haven't really done anything to them to justify that amount of money. Now, I did show you the option screen, and yes, it is lacking in certain features. You can't set it full screen. But I think one of the reasons you can't set it full screen is obviously the size of the map that you're playing on. You, you have far too much screen real estate, to, and you, it might break certain aspects of the game. Because you... Oh, that was close. Damn healer. Damn mages. You know, if you actually could set this full screen on a, a 1080p monitor, you're probably going to break it because you'll be able to see what's in the lower half of the screen much easier than you can as it is at the moment. Which actually is part of the fun of the game because you don't know what you're about to walk into or what's going to walk into you. Enemies do sort of just, for want of a better word, fade in, which I don't have a problem with because you can still attack them if they are fading in. This is where it gets a lot more complex and a lot harder. Now, I don't have a problem with them fading in because you can still get the attack in. Uh, I think they might actually take a little bit less damage or usually by the point I'm that close because I have almost walked into enemies that way. Oh dear. 
Ah, oh, freeze power. Oh, and there you go. There's it. Game over. Ah. Oh. Oh, I was enjoying that. Let's retry the stage because it's a fun level. Uh, shall we? Oh, I can't add a hero. I'm max heroes here. And that's that's not like, like I was saying because it adds. The, oh, there you go. I lost one. Oh, did I lose one? Yeah, it adds a lot more to the game where you have to think. Well, my train of heroes is this long. I have to. You know, you're not able to turn as sharp as you are if you have two heroes or just one. But if you're that low on heroes in levels like this, it's going to be really, really hard for you. Oh, and damn it. And you can walk into, just like Snake, you can walk into the, your cell. And that's not good either. Luckily, I only lost one hero. I have done that a couple of times where I've lost like three or four. Which is not fun. Especially this level, because this is where it stops being so easy. Because you've got groups with healers, groups with fireballs. So a lot of this also comes down to knowing where to attack. You know, some enemies you can't attack head on because they will just sword swipe you or lance you. And you have a health bar, so each character has a health bar, so you have to take that into account. Luckily, collecting certain gems will heal your health. You can pick up potions as well. So adding in the power-ups also really makes the game a lot of fun. I thought I missed him then. Yes, bombs for the win. And a token. Yeah, don't walk into frozen enemies either. That will kill you. There's a lot of ways to die in this game. And because it's the type of game where you have to go back to the beginning, it is a challenge. You know, you have to work your way back through those early levels to get to this stage. And obviously, you do have the ability to restart a level, but it's going to cost you tokens. So, again, you have to balance that out. You know, do I want to spend one more token to try and get past this level? Do I want to spend the one token to get... I'm going to miss that token. Ah, I'm going to miss the magnet. Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah, do you want to spend that token to retry the level, skip the level to move on? And the fact that every level you get to unlocks a new character for you is a really good idea. It keeps you playing. It wants you to get through that level because, hey, I've got a new character to play. And what's he like? You know, what are they like? What moves do they have? Are they ranged? Like, you know, it does allow you to look at those heroes and see what levels you unlock them on. This is about as far as I've got in the game, by the way. I don't think I've made it past the dungeon. So, I'm quite happy to be here and probably was worth investing that one token. If this type of game appeals to you, I think you're going to be really happy with it. Simple and challenging. Which I'm all for. I like that. It's nice to have a game that you can throw on, play for a couple of minutes, walk away, and be happy and satisfied. Because you know you've had your money's worth out of it. And this game, I think, really delivers on that. Can't give me a magnet. No. There's a magnet. Oof. Close call. This is such a fantastic little game with the lovely 16-bit aesthetic and the music to go with it. I can be a sucker for a good soundtrack, you know, stuff like FTL. And this, I really love a soundtrack to this. So I'm going to have to have a hunt around and see if there's one available because this is really, really good. Oh, more heroes. The train gets longer and longer. It's giving me some nice power-ups. What's going on? The game's feeling nice. Does it want me to get past this level? Probably not, because I'm going to die horribly. I will say trying to play this game and commentate on it at the same time is a little bit awkward. Oh no, I think I did it. Now, have I beat this level? Yes, the first time I've done it. I have unlocked Slash. The next hero, Ember. So if I beat this level, I unlock a new hero. Let's see how this goes. Oh god, this level's a bit smaller. Oh, fire spiders. Oh, I lost a hero. I like the fact we get so many levels and it's still mixing up the variety. It's mixing up the spiders, the enemy styles. It's got a lot of replayability in it because you're probably not going to beat this game in one single sitting. I've been playing this for a few hours now and I haven't, you know, this is the first time I've got to this level. 
so it gives you a lot to work for. The fact that it has this lovely addictive gameplay style and such a twist on a familiar genre that we haven't seen in a long time, I love it. I really do. I can't say enough nice things about this game and I'm honestly, if you're in the mood for a nice quick and cheap game, you cannot go wrong with this. Nimble Quest is a lot of fun. Yeah, but it's also mean and horrible and trying to kill me. Oh, and it did. Oh. Two tokens to carry on. No, I'm, I'm going to come out. I've said enough. So yeah, that was Nimble Quest and yay, I unlocked a new hero. We only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more to go. So yeah. Like I said, this is available on Steam. It is $3.99. It's from Nimblebit. And I think it's highly worth you investing your money on it. It's a fun little title to play on the PC if you're looking for something a little bit different. And for those of you that have played Snake in the past, it's nice to revisit that style of gameplay and have a, some new mechanics added to it. A wonderful aesthetic, a wonderful soundtrack. Like I said, I cannot say enough good things about this game. So why are you sat there? Go buy it. It is $3.99. Go buy it now. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll see you next time.